All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Our guest this week needs no introduction as he is a long, long time friend of the program. Put your hands together for Mr. Kellen Rowe of the Seattle Sounders, who, by the way, just got off a flight from halfway around the world uh, where the, the Sounders were playing in the Club World Cup in Morocco. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're looking at him and you've seen some bags under his eyes and like, damn, those bags are almost as big as Sam's. He just got off a, a cross-continental flight. So, Kellen, thanks for, for hopping on. How are you feeling today? I feel like I've got about four kids screaming in my face. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> so, you, how's the jet lag? Is it uh, kicking your ass yet? I mean, since I just got off, I am delusional. Uh, I've got a co cup of coffee in front of me that will hopefully keep me up so I can get back on the time zone here. But uh, we're riding on about five hours of sleep. Let's do it for like the past two days, not like nice. one day. Nice. Yeah. So you're, you're, the, this wow. interview could go off the rails wow. quickly. <laughs> okay. Well, as I sort of teased before, um, Club World Cup, FIFA Club World Cup, Seattle Sounders were the first MLS representative um, you know, before we get to the game itself, you know, what, what did you know about the competition? What did you think about the competition? When you heard the FIFA World Cup, you sort of, what did it mean to you, if anything? I remember watching a game because I, I think it was Liverpool that had won it a few years back. And uh, I had a buddy that was like, you watching this game? I'm like, no, what the fuck are they playing it? Um, I, I, they're not playing Prem at the moment. And I had seen one of their games and they had won it. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool that they get, you know, these other clubs get to play these teams. And when they told us that that was what we were playing, when we're playing through the Champions League, it's like, oh, shit, we play some cool teams. And then when you see Real Madrid win Champions League, you're like, oh, shit, <laughs> we can, oh. we, can <laughs> we can play who? <laughs> uh, it, it's just pretty cool, man, that, that you get to – to play with some of the best players in the world, even though we're playing over here in the MLS and they're playing over there in Europe. It, it's just, it's really cool to see. And it's a, it's a competitive thing. It's not just some exhibition that you're getting and you're, you're playing for the fans and, it, you know, you get to actually have a competitiveness and there's a trophy there and there's money involved and, and everyone's kind of grinding after it. And you kind of see the level uh, of what everyone else in the world is. Uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. So did you talk at all about, you know, the added pressure perhaps of being the first M because, you know, like, listen, Liga MX has been the representing North America yeah. in this competition for God knows how long at this point, you guys are the first MLS club to win the, the CONCACAF champions league and therefore go to this competition. Was there any talk about, you know, we're the first, we got to sort of, you know, do something to, to show out a little bit or, or was it just like known? No, I, I mean, it was definitely known, but it was, it was, uh, it was also spoken of. Uh, and I think we did a really good job of it uh the senior guys on the team were you know when things were tough when you're grinding through that preseason that first you know for us it was ended up being first two weeks of hell week uh of getting that base fitness back and we had to ramp it up a little bit quicker because we had a you know our competitive game was four weeks i think a little bit under four weeks away uh from from the first day we started and so when you're doing those extra runs when you're grinding in that 11 v 11 scrimmage it was like, guys, we need to, I don't care how tired you are. We're the first team to do this. We cannot fuck this up. You know, we need to show well. We can lose, but we cannot show like shit. And <laughs> I did a pretty good job of that. Okay. Like, well, I, that's a sort of a good lead in for the game. But before we get to the game, I actually kind of want to talk about Morocco a little bit. Because yeah. I've never been there. Uh, I've heard nothing, honestly, nothing but amazing things about the place you were also in Spain, which I think is where you were sort of uh, <laughs> walk us through the blow by blow, right? You get on a plane from Seattle, you land somewhere in Spain. It's exotic. It's tropical. It's beautiful. The women are amazing. Pitches are, you know, just pristine. And then you go to Morocco and I assume, I assume pretty much the same thing, but just walk. I'm, this is my night, you know, pipe dream by the way, but yeah. sort of walk us through the actual lived experience of it. Yeah. Let me tease you a little bit and then bring you home. Uh, Look, like Marbella is freaking gorgeous. Um, now, we're there in the wintertime. It's the offseason, so it's a little bit more on the quieter side, which is probably better for us during the preseason. But we stayed in a nice little resort, had a little golf uh, on, on a golf course on there. So that was great. We were able to do that in our off day. You could walk to the field, and it was a big facility. So you could walk from the resort to the field. Oh, my God. Um, you know, 55, 16, sunny every day. At one point, we were playing. Uh, we had four teams at the uh, 
the complex we were at. So if you wanted to, you could come in and be like, hey, let's do a 30 minute scrimmage. And you Who's the other team? Uh, there was D- Dallas ended up being there for a little bit, FC Dallas. Um, so that was nice. The last two days we were there, they were there. There's a team from Norway. Uh, there's a women's team from Norway and then a team from Austria. Okay. Yeah. From all over. Nice. Yeah. Oh, European teams go there all the time. But the culture of Spain, we got to go into the Marbella, like old town, beautiful. I got my, I got all I wanted was a bottle of wine and a pot of paella. And I got totally amazing. Uh, I may have had a little <clears throat> souvenir um, that Ooh, made nice. its way, made its way back. Um, <laughs> But that was great. You got to grind. You got to be, you know, you got to be a tourist as well as, you know, when you didn't have time to rest for a second, you got to go see a new place. And it kind of kept, it kept you going when you're grinding through, you can't move, feel your legs anymore. And you're like, I have to run more. Okay. That's fine. At least I get to go like walk around the city later. I'll, I'll be okay. Um, then you go to Morocco and we get greeted with, I mean, I mean a buffet of treats and, and, pastries and local and you up. local chef took a week to prepare it <laughs> a week to prepare for us to land and us to to walk through this luxurious buffet of pastries i tried i tried to try everything look I'm it, a would fat be, it would be offensive I'm a, not to it would be rude not to <laughs> yes. look, i'm a fat kid but i'm not that fat of a kid um but then they had the tea i think the proper moroccan tea bro when I tell you, I've asked every person, like, set, what do you do? What, whatever it is, show me what you do. Tell me what you do. And they're like, it's Morocco. It's what we do. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I had Moroccan tea every day, three times, four times a day. It was great. Um, but the people were great. They were, it was luxurious. We had a gorgeous little resort that uh, just off Tangier. The city itself, with the, the pictures that we saw, we weren't there long enough to actually go into the city, unfortunately. Uh, but the stories we heard from Brad Evans, who was going in involved, um, we had pictures that people. It's just, it was, it was amazing. It was when I, the word I would say is luxurious. It was so luxurious. Nice. Uh, well, listen, I have, heard, as I said, I've heard nothing but good things about Morocco. I need to get there. I'm not a tea drinker, but I, I assume it's probably, oh, you're yeah, you'll, you'll still like the tea, even if you're not a tea drinker. You're gonna um, drink. <laughs> you're gonna drink. Is it, is it sort of putting Seattle coffee to shame, by the way? No. No. Okay. Never. never. Okay. Right. Reason, first thing I did when I got home is I made a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. All right. We're just putting it in perspective here. Okay. Um, now the game itself, you guys are playing El Ali. An Egyptian yeah. team. So what did you know about them? What was sort of the scouting report to them? The biggest thing for us is they're fit. We're not. They're mid season yeah. and they're yeah. doing they're like crushing the Egyptian season yeah. as well. I think they're undefeated. As they always do, I feel like. Yeah, so yeah. they're undefeated. Watching their games uh, leading up and then watching their game against uh, Auckland FC, the, the directness of them. They were – no matter what, and you saw it a few times in the game, we were just good enough about getting back uh, and, and cutting things out, but they counter with numbers and it it's rapid. Uh, some of those guys got some pace on them on the wings, especially. And so when you, when you can go, I think the game against Auckland, they played a front three uh, and then for our game, change the front three. That's how talented and depth and, and, and you know, in the depth chart they are. And so, um, and then in our game, they ch- they went back to the other three in one sub, and you're like, oh shit. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, us coming in—that's our first competitive, real competitive game. You know, we go through preseason, and most guys will say, you know, you, you're you're getting there, you're trying to get minutes. You you win or lose, okay, whatever. You're just trying to get minutes, get your touches back, and and, and feel good. This was, hey, if you lose, you're done, and that's it. And yeah. so we were, our first competitive game to to go up against a team that's undefeated in their season. Just got, <laughs> You know, just played a game a few ga- a few days before, um, and rested half their guys, and so it's like they're coming fresh as well, and to to compete with them for eighty eight minutes, I believe it was, and for them to get a goal like they did in the deflection sense that we actually had covered, uh, we had chances of our own, we could have won that game two one easily uh, if you know the little things go our way. I think I would love, and this is you know maybe. It, 
it attests to how the MLS season works and and why the League MX is so good in the Champions League is because they're through their season or they're in their season um, and they do so well there the same reason. I would love to see these teams come against MLS teams when we are mid-season, when we're in mid-form and when we're on our fitness, when we're gluing like no one's business on the field and um, you know, I would love to see that because if this is our first game, I cannot wait to see our 10th, 15th, fucking 30th game. I can't wait. I got a, I got a question sort of along those lines. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to save it for rapid fire. I'm going to save it for rapid fire, but it, it, you make a good point though. It's, it's, yeah. it's the same situation with CONCACAF Champions League, right? Except this is, it hits harder and quicker and faster yeah. and it's one off. <laughs> You can, you know, a lot of a lot of teams will get knocked out first round, second round of Champions League because it is the first or second game you're playing. You're playing competitive, and so if you get, you know, it, it, and it happens to everyone, but if you get that one or two injuries because you're playing hard first time you're coming out and playing ninety minutes, hey, your second and third round are screwed. Mm-hmm. So if you can get through those first two healthy and and competitive, you're flying through the semis and finals. Because you're gluing already, you're in it. So if we can, I I don't know what the, you know, everyone loves their break and they need it because we have a long ass season. But something to to get those guys going earlier, because we want to be competitive. We want this league to continue to be in those big tournaments. We got to find a way. So if you can give a letter grade for your performance, I'm going to dig in just a little bit. But for now, you know, if you give a letter grade for for how the Seattle Sounders played in that game. Me in Marbella, fucking A plus, dude. <laughs> I rock that shit. I have a tan. No, you can't. But you can. Maybe. You can tell. It, it, you're glowing. You're glowing. Uh, look, I would say okay. Realistically, I would give this a B minus. I wouldn't go to a C plus. It's too far down. Mm-hmm. A B minus. We went against, like I said, against a team that mid season rapid playing like they countered, which is a hard team to play against when you're not fit. I mean, the way that they scored and the chances that we created, I think, yeah, B minus. B minus. Okay. I showed well enough for MLS to be like, oh, shit. Okay. Like, teams aren't going to write us off mm-hmm. when when we show up there again. So, you know, from my watch of the game, you guys defensively, you look pretty good like it was looked structured and sort of like this is your first game man didn't look so bad offensively you didn't get much done you know you got a little you got some things here and there but like what could you have done better on the sort of offset offensive side you know when you go through a preseason as quickly as we did uh the first thing you want is not score goals or not to uh letting goals yeah right that's it's, and we did focus a lot on defense and i think that was uh, warranted because of the game that we're playing. Um, I would say for us to allow our front three, front four, maybe at times to just be more selfish, just uh, go be a, go be the proper forwards that you are. We all know that you want to score goals that they want to, you know, go, go be it. You want to, you want to stay up there for, Hey, take a playoff defensively we got your back but when we do hey go counter and just shoot score do whatever you need to do be the fancy be the skillful do what you need to do uh to get your name in the paper we don't care as long as you win on the internet i mean you're right there there were a ton of shots i think when i looked at the stats it was like less than 10 shots period and it on goal i think you guys had like for us one for them yeah exactly there was it wasn't a ton of action um and again Again, you have to clue in. That's our first game of the season. Imagine the first preseason game. You're not winning five to four. Yeah. You know, it's it's more so one zero two zero max. So yeah, we need to figure that out. That's, that's something we'll kind of we got two weeks now, I think, something like that before our first game. So the before we move off the game itself, you know, just how much, how big of a kick in the dick was that goal in the 88th minute? <laughs> I had us like, you know, there's a few times in that I was like, fuck, we're going to, we're going to kind of stroll through this. Like we're playing really well. First five minutes. I thought, Oh fuck. Uh, we couldn't get the ball down. I, I don't know what it was. Field pressure. They were pressing us for again, first game. Yeah. But after those first five minutes, 
My by the way, my player of the game, Jackson Reagan. Oh, Jackson Reagan in the back, playmaking, like taking touches by guys. Gave a little head fade to one guy. <laughs> and the other way. We're, we're sitting down on the bench, just like number <laughs> ten in the back. Oh my god! Um, but for it to end and all the hard work and and the defensive structure that we had, the the chances that we had for it to end on a deflection like that. That you know, Nico Ladero had a a, a, f- a right-footed volley. Actually, I think it was a right-footed volley in the first half that deflected wide, like. And you're going that one, trickled in. Yeah, it's always those. <laughs> Just make it all the worse. Um, so then, what what did uh, what did Schmetzer say? You know, in the locker room after the game, just like good game, guys. Uh, shit happens. Kind of, um, you know, you have to kind of take all this with a grain of salt. You know, he was proud of us that we put in all the work and um, that we deserved better. And we, we did. We all knew it. Um, but I was actually able to give a little chat as well with the guys that, look, it's everyone was angry. Everyone was sad. Um, there were guys in there that were, and as every professional sport has, there's guys in there who have had great preseasons and didn't get on the field. Um, you know, I'm angry. I didn't get on the field just to, just to experience it. I, I don't know if I would have made a difference, but I wanted to experience that game. That's a game that you'll never get back. Um, but we had three or four guys that, you know, Freddie Montero and, and Air Bear came on with like two minutes left and was like, Hey, go score a goal. Like that's tough. That's really tough mentally. And so I was able to tell the guys like, look, this, if this is what we're starting at, First game, first real competitive game, we're going to be fucking flying if we, you know, five games from now, if we continue on this trajectory. But we have to make sure that we're good pros. And when we get back home like we are now, take your rest. We deserve it. But we got two weeks to get ready for a real game again. And we cannot drop. Like, this can't be like Champions League where, hey, we want it and our season's done. No, no, no. Guys, our season hasn't even fucking started yet. Let's make sure that we're good pros and we can make sure that none of that, you know, no playoff stuff and, and all that. And we can make sure we're going to be one of the best teams in the, in the West. Uh, you know, did you have any talk <clears throat> amongst the guys about just like how bad you wanted to face Real Madrid and just sort of experience what it would have been like to have Benzema, you know, <laughs> dealing with you or Vinicius blowing by you or fouling him or whatever. There was a joke. Uh, my buddies that was like hey, Kellen if you get in it's just you versus Vinicius just like just like let him go just like, don't hurt don't hurt him just just let him go and like and maybe once in a while like give him a laugh or a pat in the back <laughs> was this from a Real Madrid fan and you're just not gonna catch up to him <laughs> I mean that, that's exactly the time when you, you you know you get a you get stuck in the first time you see him just to let him know you're there and then, of course, then, then you're on a yellow card, and then you got to basically play the rest of the game. Yellow card for Vinicius Jr. I don't give a fuck. It would have um, been worth it. I was chat about it. Everyone wanted – that was a big game. Everyone wanted to, whether it was Flamingo or Real. We know we wanted to make that next round. Um, and then if you guys had a few, like, uh, you know, myself, Steph Fry, we wanted to experience more of the Moroccan culture, and you get to go to the Rabat, you know, in, in the capital the next game, and you get to stay for another week. That's fucking dope, man. So – it's it's definitely bum. Everyone's pretty bums. Um, but again, we gotta kind of wipe it away. Will this help? Um, you know, so we talked last year, right? And you were on, and you talked about how the Concacaf Champions League, while an awesome experience, and the fact you won it is fantastic, it kind of fucked you for the the actual season. Like you guys were just sort of dead, and and you know it was a tough. It was a tough haul. Is this, will this help or hurt you for, you know, in your prep for the actual season? I think it hurts us. I, I you know, I think if we want, it helped us immensely because we're playing top end people, right? Our top end teams. Now that we have it, um, you know, unfortunately, we have to go find a game or two. And we're not in a preseason area where people are playing. Yeah. And it's not like we can just, we were just gone for three weeks. You got to come home and see the families. That's just not something you you can do. So we're home now. We're trying to find games. We can find one, and so now we've played two game, two proper games. Yeah, maybe, but one proper game and one scrimmage. 
to get ready for a season. Right. And you get Colorado on what, February 26th, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's look, I, and I, I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, who, I'm not sure who's the blame, you know, mm-hmm. can we go find games, maybe competitive ones? Probably not unless we go out of the country again. Yeah. Um, and spend time and money away and, and, and things of that sort, which is not great on your bodies when you're trying to recover from a very intense month of training. You know, the 10 hour flight we just took, fuck, it's going to take me three days to get back to normal in my body. And you old. <laughs> yeah, shit, yo, I had, I had the stuff on my back. I had the neck. I was, I look like an old man. Oh, uh, listen, I just, like, I know it doesn't hit you till 30 something. <laughs> it hits. <laughs> it hits. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I, again, I don't know who to blame, but we need to find games, and yeah. we're hoping that you know we can take this mentally. Like I said, be good pros, but that first game, first two games are going to be tough for us. Okay. Uh, any advice for the next MLS club that qualifies for the Club World Cup? Do your best to come in as fit as possible as fit as possible. That way you can do ball work. You can do the, you know, the fitness is going to, you're going to have to have the hell week, the two hell weeks, whatever it may be, but you need to be able to almost play 45 minutes first week and then work your way up to 90 by the second, third week. So you can have a few proper games leading in. We had four weeks to do it. That's not enough time to get up to 90 minute fitness. Yeah. That's tough. And you don't have anyone to play because no one else is in fucking preseason. Yeah. We came in. Yeah, it's just what, you know, the MLS schedule. It's yeah. one of those things. It's not you, like I did, there's no one to blame except for everyone. So, <laughs> how do you... <laughs> Damn you, Don you? Garber. Uh, yeah, like, it, he's he's easy one. We uh, can really do. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, let's move on. Let's do rapid fire here. So, uh, you're a small businessman, as I think... Anybody who follows you on Instagram would know, but I think a lot of people probably don't. So tell us a little bit about your business. This is not exactly a rapid fire question because they're usually quick. I cannot rapid fire that. I, I know you can, but you've been training for this your whole life. I know. So tell us about your business and, and being a small businessman slash professional soccer player. So working towards, you know, being one of those smart soccer players that has something to fall back on. Uh, when I finally, my knees finally decide like, hey, stop playing this <laughs> that's uh, too much yes <laughs> if you're walking upstairs why does this hurt uh i started a wine club monthly wine club here in seattle where you get to come pick up wines from me every month so you get a box of wine two bottles per box um from all over the world it's not just washington wine it's not just oregon or napa you're getting bottles from all over we've had french bottles a spanish bottle this month uh you got italian bottles uh now some california and washington in the next few months so it's it's beautiful you get to taste around the world you get to have this small community as well which is mostly sounders fans but also people that look really enjoy wines so you get to talk and chat and learn more uh create friends and, and and whatnots and hopefully this all turns into when i'm done playing a, a little community and we can have a little bar here in seattle Nice, nice. And so right now, is it is it strictly local, but like hopefully it'll be sort of expanded it's out at some point? strictly local because I don't want to work that hard while playing still. <laughs> uh, delivery services are the worst. So <laughs> it's it's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of stress that I don't need at this moment. So we're sticking to Seattle for now. But when we do, when I decide that I'm ready to branch out, it means I'm probably done with my career. And so we need to, that's another another branch i'll do when i'm done okay um if and this was the question i teased earlier if you played this game against el ali in july what's the score i think if they're in their same seat like we're in the same section of our season so let's say we've all we both had 10 games each you're looking at more of a i want to say it's a 2-1 toss-up it's a two one toss up. I think both teams are clicking a little bit better, but with the the speed and talent they have going forward, it could be like I said, a toss up because they could catch on the break if we're grinding, we're we're putting in passes, we're everyone's up, we put in a few balls, we're they all of a sudden catch a ball and three guys are running at you, three v three, 
the other way, that's dangerous. Yeah. You'll you see it every weekend in the prem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Coolest. It sounds like you experienced Marbella more than you experienced Morocco. So I was going to say coolest thing about Morocco, but I'm going to switch it. What's the coolest thing you experienced about Marbella? I'll give you both. I'll give you both. Okay. So Marbella, Marbella coolest thing I had. Um, would be one of the nights we had, uh, one of the last few days we had on our own. And I was able to walk around what's called Old Town, walked around, great people. I went, all I was doing was trying to find a bottle of wine and pot of paella. And I ended up having this little tapas place first, had that, had a glass of cava, which is like sparkling, sparkling wine in Spain. Um, so I had a small little, like two little tapas, patas bravas, and then a small like seafood paella that was just split up into little bits. Uh, and a glass of cava, chatting a little bit with the locals. And then I walked around the rest and the, the other side of Old Town, sat down and had a proper meal. Bottle, it was a full bottle of wine. And like the guy was like, hey, it's your first time in Spain. I was like, yeah. He goes, great. We're going to just, and he served me squid. He served me this like black pudding, but it was like Spanish black pudding. Fucking amazing. And then two pots of paella. He's like, I couldn't decide which one to give you. And so he gave me both. <laughs> wine with him and his servers. I was there early because obviously, you know, I'm American and I'm a dummy and I don't eat late. Um, so it was just me and me and the servers just hanging out. And it was great. Were you speaking Spanish? I attempted and they're like, we speak English. I was like, thank God. <laughs> that makes for a much better conversation, <laughs> I'm sure. No, when they're saying like, hey, don't worry, we speak English, I'm like, oh, not bad. <sighs> <laughs> yeah that is the, the nicest way of saying yeah you suck at this we'll, we'll switch over to yeah <laughs> i can get around the field once in a while but <laughs> uh how excited are you not to be playing Concacaf champions league this year you know what's funny is i'm bummed i think it's both it. can't no we won it and can't reclaim our title yeah well, I, I i think that's i mean i guess we could have if we won it they won like the league and stuff, but like, that's bogus. Is it weird? Is it weird that like you don't get an automatic bid as the champ? Yeah, I think that's... it is too. Like in the UEFA, you get an automatic bid. Like you're just you're back that way, right? The defending champ should be able to defend their crown, even if you know whatever the qualifying rules. Find a way that they kick Tottenham out of the. You know they found a way to kick Tottenham out of the Champions League. A few years ago, when Chelsea won the won the damn thing, so they can figure out a way to get Seattle Sounders in there. I think. I don't yeah. know. I, am I glad I'm not going in another place? Yeah, of course. Come on. Uh, but yeah, I'm disappointed in the sense that we can't defend our title. For sure. Okay, favorite wine at the moment. I had because I was in Spain and I was doing Spanish wines. I had this Grand Reserva from 2014. It's like a Tempranillo. Oh, it's a real hot. Oof. It was incredible. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. And you know, the best part about wines from when you're going at, in Italy, in France, in Spain, in the Europeans, whatever it may be, it is so cheap. There's no tax on it. You're not getting an upcharge at the restaurant. I paid 40 euro. For an incredible bottle that's probably about 200 in the US. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> now, now describe it to us. If you're going to do, do your little wino thing, <laughs> where you, you sniff on it a little bit. Grand, Grand, Grand Reserve, yeah. I mean, it's been aged in the barrel and in the bottle, and they don't release it for a long time. Um, and so it has this age to it. So it has this like smoky cigar, pencil shaving, like, just earthy tone to it with a little bit of red berry as well. And like when I tell you that everyone that tried that, they had a young wine at the restaurant and then I bought this bottle um, because I'm a snob and an asshole. I wanted everyone to, buy it, to tell me that I'm fucking right. Uh, and so I did, I poured it around to the guys. Um, I even uh, gave it to coach and was like, here's my, my, my playing time. Obviously you didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> It was worth a shot. That's the wine. Didn't like my joke. Uh, <laughs> obvious. But everyone that tried it was like, hey, yeah, this is like much, much better than what we're drinking right now. <laughs> That's why you listen to me. Yeah. So when you got those compliments, did did that sort of make your day? Like, is that sort of like, oh, yeah, God, this, yeah, this is what I'm all, this is what I'm here for. Oh, 
I did. My head was held up so high. My dick grew 10 inches straight. <laughs> I love it. You wine snobs in your weirdo <laughs> ways. Oh, man. If you get a little compliment, oh, hey, you're right. It's like, shh. yeah. I don't know if I want to get that from like a random person or like from a significant other. I want both, but it's the same. <laughs> if someone tells me that I just pour them a glass of wine, they're like, you know what? I like your recommendation better than I thought. Done. That's I'm like top my, of the world. That's my significant other telling me like, I'm sorry, you're right. <laughs> Never. Wow. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? <laughs> that's what I imagine it feels like. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, last one. What needs to go right for the Sounders to win MLS Cup? So if ML, if you win MLS Cup, yeah, what went right? The use of our depth. We realize I think it's a different era for Seattle at the moment and that we have so much depth. I mean, in, in just about every position uh, with qu- and proper quality. You got a young guy like Jackson Reagan who came in and played really well, but he's now playing in, at, at that moment, playing in front of Javier Arriaga, who just went to the World Cup. Um, you've got young guys coming in like Obed Vargas. You've got Josh Atencio, who played like I think 70 minutes last night, pretty darn well. Danny Leba as well, who came in and played pretty darn well. Um, U20 national team guy. We just picked up Air Bear, who is one of the in training, he's one of the best goal scorers I've seen in a long time. Uh, who's, you know, right behind Ro, Ro, Ro it is Like, come on. Uh, and then Leo Chu is, is my pick for the best preseason guy, um, which surprised everyone. He came in with a fire under him. Uh, and if he gets some, some good minutes in him, I think he could be incredible. And so we've got a lot more depth than normal, and I think we need – we will we'll be more brave and in, in, than we have in the past and use as much as we can uh, kind of similar to, I mean, it's never going to be like Man City, but similar to how Man City does it, where you have big guys on the bench at least once, twice a month. Basically, this is not, you guys finished 11th in the table last year, right? This, that, this is not an 11th place team in your mind at all. No. All right. Not Okay. All right. You're off the hot seat. Kellen Rowe. Thank you. It's always great to have you on, uh, give a little taste of the, what's going on in the world of wines, um, and everything else. Thank you for coming out again. And, and, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll join us again before too long. Hopefully a little less jet lag next time. Yeah. I hope so. You actually, you look fine, by the way. I mean, you, you don't look, you don't look like you just got off a, a full day. Like day of 40, baby. <laughs> just, Yeah. Just wait. It's <laughs> uh, and thank everybody. Thank you for listening. Uh, and everybody, go f- if you're in Seattle. And actually, my my college roommate is in Seattle. I'm going to get him in on this wine thing and tell him to compliment you. Uh, but if you're in Seattle, go get in in Kellen's uh, you know wine of the month club. This guy knows what he's talking about when he's wine. He you didn't use leathery this time, which I was. It's too bad because it wasn't. <laughs> is that a mean thing to say about a wine like across no, the board? Okay, it's positive. It, it, I know, I know. The lead. Yeah. I just don't understand it. I love it. I love the wine world, but I do every not time, every understand time I like, It's kind of like leathery. All I could think of is the the, the SNL skit of the leather. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have it. Please do. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. So get, go get it in his wine club. And uh, and we, listen, Kellen will be back, hopefully, before too long. Hopefully we haven't... Uh, you know, wasted too much of his time and made it too painful. So thank you, Kellen. And and thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you guys again soon.